In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honour. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Hezekiah fell ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, The Lord says this, Put your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not live. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and addressed this prayer to the Lord. Ah, Lord, remember, I beg you, how I have behaved faithfully and with sincerity of heart in your presence and done what is right in your eyes. And Hezekiah shed many tears. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and say to Hezekiah, The Lord, the God of David, your ancestor, says this, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will cure you. In three days' time, you shall go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add fifteen years to your life. I will save you from the hands of the king of Assyria. I will protect this city. Bring a fig poultice, Isaiah said. Apply it to the ulcer, and he will recover. Hezekiah said, What is the sign to tell me that I shall be going up to the temple of the Lord? Here, Isaiah replied, is the sign from the Lord that he will do what he has said. Look, I shall make the shadow cast by the declining sun. Go back ten steps on the steps of Ahaz. And the sun went back the ten steps by which it had declined. The Word of the Lord You have held back my life, O Lord, from the pit of doom. I said, so I must go away, my life half spent, assigned to the world below for the rest of my years. You have held back my life, O Lord, from the pit of doom. I said, No more shall I see the Lord in the land of the living. No more shall I look upon men within this world. You have held back my life, O Lord, from the pit of doom. My home is pulled up and removed like a shepherd's tent. Like a weaver you have rolled up my life. You cut it from the loom. You have held back my life, O Lord, from the pit of doom. For you, Lord, my heart will live. You gave me back my spirit. You cured me, kept me alive, changed my sickness into health. You have held back my life, O Lord, from the pit of doom. Alleluia, Alleluia. Instruct me, Lord, in your way. On an even path, lead me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus took a walk one Sabbath day through the cornfields. His disciples were hungry and began to pick ears of corn and eat them. The Pharisees noticed it and said to him, Look, your disciples are doing something that is forbidden on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read? 
what David did when he and his followers were hungry, how he went into the house of God, and how they ate the loaves of offering, which neither he nor his followers were allowed to eat, but which were for the priests alone. Or again, have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath day, the temple priests break the Sabbath without being blamed for it? Now here, I tell you, is something greater than the temple. And if you had understood the meaning of the words, what I want is mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the blameless. For the Son of Man is master of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. I am quite sure what stood out for many of us from today's reading is the account of King Hezekiah's healing and the promised sign of proof of that healing. For not only did it all seem so easy, but it also speaks our heart's desire. We too wish to be healed that easily and instantly like for ourselves and for our loved ones, don't we? But as wonderful and desirable that may be, I think that we would be missing the point if that is all we take away from the reading. I believe the more important message in the first reading is Isaiah's warning to Hezekiah, and that is to put our affairs in order. Because until and unless we have our priorities in order, our life as well as those around us will always be in a mess. For example, relationships break down when problems take priority over our loved ones. Families break apart when careers take priority over the family. And health is compromised when ambitions take priority. Having passed half the year, it is timely to take a step back and ask ourselves, have I mixed up what is really important with what isn't? If we have, then I may be like the Pharisees in today's Gospel, who placed more importance on protecting the laws than to care for the basic needs of the human person. In today's Gospel, it was the basic need for food. Jesus and his disciples were hungry, but rather than recognizing their hunger, the Pharisees placed the laws as priority over a human person, going against the very purpose of the laws, which is to uphold and protect the human person. How about us? Have I been neglecting the basic dignity and human needs of my sisters and brothers? all because I have chosen to place everything else as priority. What then can we do if we have not been putting our priorities in order? We look at what Hezekiah did. We are told that he turned his face. We are to turn away from all that is causing us to have our priorities upside down. And one way to do this is what Hezekiah did. He turned to the wall. This may sound silly or strange, but think about it. When we turn to a wall, what do we see? Nothing else but the wall, right? Similarly, when we turn away from all that is causing our priorities to go upside down, we face nothing else but God. And this is what it means to pray. Do I take time off from what I perceive as priority and instead spend time with the one who is truly my priority in my life. For when we pray, we are reminded again on what is truly important in our life, who we are before God, and that He walks in our midst. As earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What possibly are the things that will be added? I can confidently say things such as life, joy, peace, love, and many more. In other words, God, because God are all of these. Think about it. When we place God as priority in our relationships, in health, and in family, there will be love, life, and peace. Let us today pray that we may have 
the clarity and courage to place our affairs in order, so that rather than focusing on what is of less importance, we instead focus on God first, who is our first priority in all that we do. And so in response to God's word, let us now pray the words Jesus taught us to address God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed your words, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be with us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless you and have a blessed day.